This is what you would might think about, and I'm sure many of you in the crowd have grown your own tomatoes in the garden. Maybe five to ten plants, your favorite varieties or heirloom tomatoes. You put them in in the spring, and after maybe two months, if you've done a good job, you have a green thumb, you'll come and you'll harvest, like this fellow here, a nice bucket of red tomatoes. But as we also know, we often are a little bit lazy, or we don't want to put in the effort to grow these luxurious tomatoes from our garden, and we're willing to settle for those hard, rather tasteless tomatoes that come out of fields like this. And this is what I want to show you about real agricultural production using tomato as an example. You can think of the same for corn and for sorghum. And so this is a fresh market tomato production in field, which is where most of the fresh market large fruited tomatoes come from, also from Mexico. And these plants are essentially grown in these very long rows where people will come during harvest time and put them into these bins. They'll walk these bins down these very long rows and they'll collect them when they're greenish, orangish, and they'll put them in these trucks. These trucks will get loaded to completion, and after they're completely loaded, they'll be removed from the field in this long caravan of trucks, and essentially taken to storage until they'll be gassed with a hormone to cause them to turn red. As much as you may not want to hear about that, this is the reality of how a lot of our fresh market tomato production is generated. And in order to feed this growing population, we will have to realize that this is a part of an integrated system where we have large-scale production, as well as what we you know, would appreciate going to farmers markets and more organic sustainabil sustainability uh, types of uh, production. So this is fresh market tomato production. And one thing I think you can see here, and if you've grown tomatoes in your own garden, you may know that oftentimes they become very tall and lanky and very large, extremely large. These are large, but they're not as large as you might see growing in your home garden from heirloom tomatoes. In fact, these are a lot more compact, and this is why they're staked here. They won't grow much higher than that. And this compact determinate plant is one trait that I want you to focus on, this term called determinate, which makes essentially this very compact plant, which allows it to grow in three to four months to completion, in which case you come in after the three months, you're harvesting your yield, you're out, you're turning over the soil, and you're putting in a whole new crop after that. Okay, so this determinate growth was a major change from the heirloom tomatoes and also the wild ancestor, the wild form that was domesticated. We heard about corn domestication. Tomato also had a wild ancestor that was an indeterminate form that would become very large in the field, much like a tree. Now that's for fresh market tomato production, the need for having these compact determinate plants. The same is true for production for processing. This is ketchup, sauces, soups, juices, Tomato processing production depends on having these determinate plants, these compact plants, because you can harvest them in rows on a combine. This is a machine known as a combine. And this machine is coming through the field, cutting the plants from the field, separating the green parts of the plant, the vegetative parts from the fruits. You have mechanical annually grading the quality of the fruits. They're then loaded onto these large 18 wheelers. And this is my favorite part. It looks like it's puking here. This is great. There it is, yeah. So, and so this is a massive production. And, and in, again, it's all because of this determinate compact growth habit. And one other trait, one other mutation that I'll tell you about. 